<clears throat> How we doing, everybody? Today is Saturday, April 29th. Just coming to you today with another uh, installation of the strategies for the changing market. We're talking about real estate note investing as well as seller financing. Uh, we feel that these are two very good um, strategies that if you are an investor, if you're a seller, if you're a buyer, um, you know, someone with a 401k, you really want to try and look into seller financing opportunities as well as real estate notes to get a solid return on your money, a return that is keeping up or beating inflation. Um, so we're just bringing this uh, information to you uh, week by week, just breaking it down. Uh, if you go back on uh, my Instagram page or my YouTube channel at Abundant Capital Group, You'll see the first two editions that we did. Uh, we missed last week. I uh, had a dentist appointment, so I wasn't able to uh, do last week. But we're here nonetheless this week, um, streaming on Instagram Live as well, but also here on Zoom. Um, so we just want to you know, talk about this, uh, the pros and the cons of things uh, when it comes to seller financing and real estate notes. The first couple of weeks we talked about seller financing from the <clears throat> seller's pers perspective, um, what are, you know, why you would want to do it. And then we're probably, we're going to touch on why you, you know, what's the downside of it. Um, you know, obviously not everything is foolproof. Uh, you have to be, you know, totally honest. There are things that um, could happen that, um that are, are negative, that are not good. So we want to discuss those as well. Uh, give me one second here. I'm dog sitting as well. So just had to make sure that he was okay. Um, so what are the, some of the bad things that could happen when you sell a finance a property uh, or create a note on a property? That's what we're going to talk about. Um, well, the the biggest thing is that someone could stop paying you because um, if you you know haven't seen the other videos, seller financing is basically creating financing for a buyer. Um, you may have a property with a mortgage on it. You may own a property free and clear, and what you are doing is creating um, financing for a buyer to pay you over a certain amount of time, just like a bank would when you took out a loan on the property. Uh, you did the same thing, but now you're just creating this for someone else. So what could go wrong? Obviously, when you bought your house, the worst thing that you thought about was, you know, something happens and I can't pay. And that's pretty much the same thing here. Um, somebody could stop paying you. Uh, and you do, in some cases, have a mortgage still on the property that's in your name. Uh, or if you own it free and clear, uh, you know, the property, you know, you don't have a mortgage on it, but the person still could stop paying. So that's one of the things that could happen. You know, life happens. We just, you know, we just come out of post COVID, you know, something like that could happen again. Um, people are, you know, going to get laid off and are starting to get laid off right now in this economy. Um, so someone could lose their job, which obviously affects if they could pay or not. Um, so that's probably like your worst case scenario. <clears throat> a lot of times, uh, what happens and what you can do to guard against this is that you have the ability to modify the loan. Somebody comes to you and said, look, you know, my wife, my husband, they reduced their hours or they lost their job. So we only have the one income coming in right now. A lot of times you can still modify this seller financing that you created for this particular buyer to fit what it is that they can afford. And it's not that you lose any money uh, when you do a modification, uh, you can take maybe any missed payments that they have. You can move it to the back of the loan. Uh, you can stress the loan out again. There are a lot of different options that you can do. So where you don't necessarily lose the money, you just have to collect it, you know, later on down the line. Um, so that's pretty much like the worst thing uh, that can happen. Also, you know, you get somebody in your property, um, they could tear up the property, um, just like in a rental situation. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody has heard of war stories where landlords have talked about how tenants have left their properties uh, in disarray and, in, you know, needing significant repair. Now, that could happen when you do seller financing. 
But what usually guards against that, the difference between a renter or a tenant and somebody who is owning a property or you've created seller financing for them is that they're more of an owner. They, they, they have ownership interest in the property. So they, they have uh, more of an incentive to keep up the property in case they do want to sell at some particular time or whatever the case may be. Um, but a homeowner looks at a property a lot different uh, than a tenant. A tenant has paid maybe $1,200, $2,000, $2,500, maybe the most $5,000 to secure an apartment as a security deposit. A lot of times when you're creating these seller finance opportunities, you're collecting a significant amount of money. Um, and that does two things. That gives the buyer or the person that's living in the property, what they call skin in the game. And usually because of that, they don't go in the house and tear it up. They usually fix it up. They usually upkeep it, you know, keep things uh, in good order. Uh, and also because you got a lump sum, you can maybe put some of that money that you got up front aside in case something like this does happen in case um, the person has to, you know, stops paying and, you have to possibly foreclose on the property, but you've gotten a significant amount of money that gives you a cushion in case that does happen, or you do have those funds available if you do have to go down a foreclosure route or do some repairs on a property when somebody's out. So you've kind of guarded against that. But again, we're talking about some of the things, some of the negative things um, that could go, that could happen uh, when you're doing seller financing. And pretty much um, that is probably the worst two things that could that could happen that I could think of. If anybody else out there who sees this knows um, something else that could happen that's negative when you create a seller financing um, besides those two or something that would fall into those two categories, I definitely like to know. But that's really the only, you know, the downside. And again, you do have some protections against that. Uh, and that is most likely not to happen. There's a higher percentage of that not happening than it will happen. One of those two things. So again, this is why in this particular market, with everything that's changing, interest rates going up, things of that nature, uh, you can use uh, creating seller financing on a property to manage this particular time. If you do have multiple properties, maybe you have a property with a small uh, loan on it or no loan at all, uh, you can you know, create seller financing, get cash now up front in a deposit, in a down payment, get monthly uh, payments, and then still be owed. And then also, uh, what I wanted to show um, this week is an amortization schedule. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen here. Um, oh, where are we at? So a lot of people don't really, uh, maybe they do, maybe they don't. I'm not going to say that. But uh, some people don't know like the difference between appreciation, appreciation, and amortization. So, you know, I wanted to pull this up here. This is an amortization schedule. I just took... Um, the uh, average price of a home sales price in 2016, that was about seven years ago. The reason why I did that, people usually stay on a property about seven to 10 years, uh, usually on average before they want to sell it. Um, so back in 2016, average purchase price you'll see here is uh, 400000 And then at that particular time, it looks like the average interest rate nationwide and then also New Jersey from the research that I did was probably between like four and 5%. So I just used four. And then you can see 360 months. That's how many months you have to pay it back. And this is what your, your payment would be just about $1,910. But see what people uh, only look at or a lot of times only consider is the property appreciating. And appreciation goes in peaks and valleys. Um, if you think back to 2007, 2008, when we had the crash, obviously appreciation went negative in a lot of uh, instances, it went way down. That's not typical. That's probably, you know, once in a lifetime, once in a generation type of thing that happened, hopefully. Um, but the point is, is that 
uh, your appreciation of property can go away. Uh, just like now with a lot of properties, uh, because of interest rates going up, your equity is actually coming down because the person is having to spend more uh, for the property in terms of the monthly payment. So they want to, you know, obviously come down on your asking price if you are selling the property. Uh, at one time, we just came out of market where you had 10 different people bidding on a house and bidding it up and over asking. That is kind of slowed right now. And buyers are willing to negotiate a little bit more on certain things. Uh, so because, again, the interest rate is probably twice as much as it was uh, this time last year, uh, 18 months ago. So um, but. So let's just say over seven years, 10 years, um, you know, you you had this property and now it may be worth uh, 400 and let's just say 430,000, something like that. So you've had your appreciation and you've gotten 30,000 more than what you paid, what you, what you purchased it for. But if you don't sell right now or when the market is at its peak, that can change. So maybe when you go to sell it, now you're not getting 430, maybe you're only getting 410, 415, uh, maybe you're only getting 400. But after seven years, if you look down here on the amortization schedule, um, that would be 84 months. You would you would still owe three hundred forty four thousand two hundred thirty seven dollars ninety eight cents. That's what still would be owed on the property. So in seven years, uh, you can see you still owe a significant amount of this initial four hundred thousand dollar purchase uh, that you made, and that's what amortization. That's the difference because amortization doesn't go away no matter what happens in the market. After 84 months, if the house is worth 300000 you still owe the bank 344000 And this is where potentially if you, know, if you wanted to sell and the, um, the value wasn't there, this is what is typically known as a short sale. But the bank has to accept that. They don't necessarily have to, have to accept that. They can take the property back and then go sell it. Maybe they can get somewhere close to the 344, 300,000, as opposed to, you know, maybe the market is worth 275. So, um, but that doesn't go away. And that's the point. The point is, is that, am that amortization does not go away unless the lender, which would be you, you want it to go away or forgive some of the, some of the debt. But appreciation, uh, equity in a property can go away. And we're seeing that right now. So again, this is another reason why we're talking about doing this. And maybe you're somebody that bought at the height of the market, your life has changed and you need to you know, potentially sell this property. Uh, you could sell it with seller financing and not lose any money if you have to pay a realtor's fee and you may have to come to close them with, with funds and things of that nature. Uh, doing it this way, selling it this way allows you not to take a loss and you can you know, obviously make money over time. Uh, if you can, let's say you can, instead of the person, uh, they're taking over this particular payment plus maybe another two or $300. So you're making three or $400 in cash flow every month off of it. You've gotten, you know, some money down from the potential buyer and you're able to go and move to another place depending on your circumstances. So you're actually, you know, getting upfront money, you're getting cash flow, And then again, whatever you create for this particular buyer, they're still going to owe you a significant amount of money in five years, six years, seven years, and 10 years. You know, even if we go down to 10 years, 120 months, in this example, 315,000. But if you create financing, obviously you're going to create it for more than what it would be after 10 years that you would have to pay the bank. Most likely that's what the goal would be because now you didn't lose any money and then down the line, you still be owed, you know, a significant portion. And that's when you make your money down the line because of this particular circumstance that, you know, you have to sell and you, you bought at the top of the market and, you know, otherwise you would have to take a loss. So this is why, you know, this is another reason why, like I said, like we're talking about this is because am uh, amortization does not go away. It's always there. It stays there. 
uh, and depreciate, I mean, uh, appreciation can go away. And as we continue to see uh, rates rise and probably once we come out of this buying cycle, you know, they're probably going to tick up around the first of the year going into next year again um, with everything that that is going on. So again, this is why we want to bring this information uh, to people, have them look at it as an option if you are thinking about selling. Um, also, this helps you with your taxes. Um, if you purchase this property um, and you're going to sell it, there is a capital gains tax that you're going to have to pay. Uh, if you want to relieve yourself of that and lessen that burden, seller financing is the way to go because you will only you'll only have to be taxed on the money that you receive uh, from the sale. And a lot of times, that's not this whole. Um, and it's not all of the equity at one time where you're going to get taxed on it. And you could take it in uh, increments. You take some now, you get the cash flow, which you know you'll you'll pay over your tax on over time, and then you know maybe later on down the line you can uh, sell the property and then take on that tax burden at that particular time. Um, so it's a way to defer it or uh, or even lessen it. Um, so that's that's why this is another you know great uh, great idea. Maybe you don't have uh, something to do uh, with the money right now. This equity, this thirty, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars. Maybe you don't have something pressing that you need to take care of, and so why be taxed on it? You know, let's, let's figure out a way where we can get you some cash now, get you some cash flow, and then you know in the future, um, maybe when your tax situation has changed, you're in a, a lesser tax bracket or whatever the case may be, or Maybe at that particular time, there's another uh, opportunity that you want to take take advantage of. Then you can kind of cash in uh, for that lump sum. But you know, we can you know, defer uh, these these taxes and even lessen these taxes with this as well. So, you know, I just wanted to show that as well. This that's that's a key point that a lot of people, you know, when they buy property, they want to just you know, get appreciation, which is great, but appreciation can go away depending on the ebbs and flows of the market. Obviously, the market goes up and then when it goes up, it does take a dip. So when it takes a dip, you you don't see it probably as you're losing money, but essentially that's what is happening. Your equity is going. I mean, it's not physically in your bank account at that particular time, but for all intents and purposes, the equity that you've gained over time can go away and that is essentially losing money. So uh, we don't want to do that. We want to prevent that from happening and creating seller financing and creating a note on a property is a way to do that. And then again, if you create this uh, type of scenario for someone, and let's just say in 12 months, something does happen, some emergency, some big expense comes up, you can sell a portion of the remaining payments to receive a lump sum and still be owed money in the future. Uh, let's just say you want to sell 200 payments. Uh, maybe in this case, you know, 200 payments, you could maybe sell them for $200,000, $150,000, $175,000, whatever the case may be. Um, now you can take that lump sum and then there's still payments left, you know, from payment 200 to uh, 360, there's still 160 payments left in this, you know, in, in that scenario. Or maybe there's only uh, 250 payments left and you sell 150. You still are still owed those other 100 payments. So if you sell it, get the lump sum, and then over that 150 months when that other person who bought it from you has the property, if they, if that person who's in the property sells it, or refinances, the owner of that home refinances or sells it, there's still a certain amount of money that's owed to you for those remaining 100 payments that you still own. There is a lump sum. And that, uh, you know, a lot of times is going on an amortization chart. So let's just say you sold 150 of the remaining 250 payments and somebody sells the property 75 months into that 150 payments that you so the person that bought it is still owed whatever the balance is for that remaining 75 payments that they bought. And then you're still owed the remaining lump sum 
for that hundred payments. So you you know you still get money in the back end, but you're able to get that cash up front right now. So very powerful, uh, great strategy. Something that a lot of us need to think about, especially us with retirement accounts, uh, any type of investment capital, uh, and looking for opportunities. I received the opportunity this week for five thousand uh, dollars. Get an eleven percent return on five thousand dollars, and you'll get all of your money back in less than 18 months, plus an 11% uh, interest on it. So you've made 11% on it and got all of your initial uh, $5,000 back in less than 18 months. How many times can you do that with that type of money? Uh, so people that have smaller balance IRAs and things of that nature, you know, definitely want to, to talk to you. There are a lot of these opportunities out there um, to get good rates of return that aren't beating that are beating inflation and if you can do that if you can turn that money over year after year you know get 11% you know within the, the next uh 15 months get another 11 12% the next 15 months in your retirement account you will start to see that account build up significantly in a shorter amount of time and then that gives you the choice to possibly retire or do whatever with that money at that particular time, but you can kind of see, you know, things, um, some, some gains, some, some bigger gains uh, quicker in those accounts, as opposed to, you know, just doing the stock market and things of that nature. So, you know, this is something to really think about right now. Great opportunity. Um, more opportunity is going to come as this market changes as some of the things that they're predicting are going to happen, as I mentioned earlier, some of the layoffs and things of like that, there's going to be opportunities out there uh, when you understand creating notes, amortization, and things of like that nature. So <clears throat> again, just trying to bring this to people each and every Saturday. We're only here for you know about 20, 30 minutes at the most. Um, if you have any questions, please post your comments and we'll get them answered for you. Uh, if you have a situation, if you have an investment property, if you have a property that somebody owns free and clear uh, with a small balance, maybe even with a, a high balance, but for whatever reason, life is taking you in a different direction. You don't know what to do and you think you might lose money, you know, reach out to me. Let's let's talk about your situation and figure out how it can be a win win for everyone using uh, seller financing strategies uh, to do that. Uh, my telephone number is 973-475-8488. You can reach out to me uh, via email, investorgmr at yahoo.com. Or you can check my social media, Facebook and uh, Instagram is at Abundant Capital Group. Uh, you know, and like I said, this video will be posted on Facebook as well as Instagram and my YouTube. YouTube as well is at Abundant Capital Group. There are other videos there. Um, there's a you know a few a few videos there that talks about this a little bit more in depth, but again we're just breaking this down week to week, and we just wanted to talk about some of the cons uh, today. But even with those, uh, they're really not cons. You know they're really not um, that bad. They may be a little bit of an inconvenience, but as long as you're not losing money, you know I can be inconvenienced a little while uh, while I you know make sure that I protect my investment and protect. Uh, what it is that I'm trying to do uh, in the future. And you can do that, you know, with this particular strategy. And like I said, because of who the buyers are and what they have invested in this property, a lot of times you don't have those issues. Even if life changes for someone and they can't afford the payment, a lot of times they'll come to you and something can be worked out. You can allow them to move on to the next part of their life. You don't have to go through these long three, four, five year foreclosures, especially here in New Jersey. In some other areas, a lot of times you get a better quality of a person in the property and you can you can work with them a little bit more uh, to get any type of uh, situations resolved. Um, so, you know, I just want people to try to take advantage of this, look into it. You know, if I'm not the person for you to talk to about it, just at least look into it, gather some information, take advantage of this opportunity out there. Like I said, just receive the uh, uh, a note uh, for five thousand dollars, um, well, actually less than five thousand dollars, where you can make eleven percent return 
And your investment to value on this is probably, you know, less than 30%. You know, I'm investing less than 30% in an investment that's backed by real estate. So if it does go wrong, I can, I'm not going to lose. You know, again, I may be inconvenienced for a little while, but if I get the property back and sell it, you know, I'm going to make my initial investment back uh, plus uh, something on top of that. So, um, you know, look into it and reach out to me and let's talk if, if you want to, you know, have some more specific questions. But if you do have a question, post it. We'll try to answer it uh, next week here. But we'll be back next Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, hopefully you can join me then. Everyone have a good week.